What's up guys and welcome to Upfront Games Week 11. Um, we got quite a few things to get into with uh, all three different consoles today. So we're going to dig into it starting with PlayStation as usual. So let's just jump right into it, the biggest release of the week. And this is actually cross-platform as a lot of them are, um, The Division 2. So check out the trailer and we'll get right into the news. Thanks. I'm your masters of war. We used to be ordinary people with ordinary lives. The big guns. Trained in secret. In the Only to be activated if the worst happened. In the bill of the bombs. Seven months ago, that day came. Around the country, we fought to hold things together while the virus tore us apart. We thought we had turned the tide. Until the distress call came from Washington. You had never done nothing. Our capital is falling. You put a gun in my hand. Our leaders are dead or missing. Dark forces are moving to take control of our nation. And we are the only hope to stop it. We are the last line of defense. And I hope that you die. We are the people. Making a stand to unite DC. I'll follow your casket. And your death will come soon. We are the Division. And history will remember us. Alright guys, that was the Division 2's release trailer. Um, it launches on the 15th, so you only got five more days to that. Um, if you're looking forward to it, they have made quite a few improvements from what I understand, uh, as opposed to the original Division, um, to entice a better audience um, so let's get right into it um, days gone has officially gone gold and is set to meet its April 26th release date obviously they're not talking gold as in sold numbers they're talking about gold as in it's finished and it's going to be uh, making that release date without any issues um, doubts remained until recently on whether or not they would make the date with it going gold from Sony Interactive Entertainment and Sony Bend. We know it will, which is actually really good. I'm very excited to have the game in my hands come, come next month. And so um, if you guys are too, by all means, we'll be pushing the trailer out um, upon its release or as we get closer to its release date, um, but that's coming out very, very close to Mortal Kombat 11. So uh, we'll see kind of how we we build our trailers for that week. Um, but it being very close to the end of the month, we probably won't do a review on one or the other until the following month because it's only a four-day uh, time span uh, to actually get our hands on the game and. Uh, be able to play it enough to review it for you so there's that um three fields entertainment is hard at work on a title called dangerous driving now for those of you that don't know three fields entertainment is built by two of the original creators of the burnout series from the criterion studio um, criterion has basically been gobbled up by ea and so they have split and created three fields entertainment they of course can't use the burnout um ip so to speak just because it's still technically owned by ea and criterion so that being the case this is dangerous driving and it actually is a very very 
uh, good looking comparison to a lot of the features that we all loved about Burnout as a whole. Um, it is a follow up to the Burnout series from the original creators. Um, it's releasing April 9th. This is one of the games that kind of flew under the radar because of the fact that uh, the publishers knew and that I think there's just not a whole lot of uh, publicity and traction around it. However, I did watch the trailer. It does look like it's going to live up to the Burnout series and it may be something to get your hands on when it releases April 9th. So look forward to that. Um, that's it when it comes to PlayStation for this week. So let's move right on to Xbox. So Xbox again, biggest release for the week would have been the Division 2. Of course, that's going to be across those two platforms. However, being that we have already done the trailer, we don't double up here. So you're going to get a trailer for Rico, which is a really good co-op uh, slash single player um, crime shooter uh, that is set to release on the 13th. So you got three days to that. Um, so let's get into the trailer and then we'll move on to the rest of Xbox's news for the week. Check it out. Sure. Welcome to San Amaro. city where any street criminal can become a kingpin and every meth head is an entrepreneur. And they have a lot to lose. They will not go down without a fight. Gentlemen, welcome to Rico. All right, so in my opinion, Rising Star has done a great job with Rico. Um, we'll see how it kind of builds up and whether or not it uh, lives up to everything that uh, it should be. It does look good. The art style is very um, different from a lot of games that we see, and um, it does look like it can be a lot of fun. However, I'm I'm looking at probably looking into the mechanics of it myself, how it plays, um, and then maybe we'll do a follow-up to Rico to see if it was actually worth the buy. Um, and again, this cross-platform, it's coming out on all three, uh, as well as the Switch. So, um, well, the Switch would be included in all three. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so uh, Xbox is running a console giveaway through their Twitter based off the Captain Marvel design. Um, you can go to their, twi their Twitter and see the design and enter to win. Um, not sure how much longer they'll be running it, uh, but it is a full-on Captain Marvel cover uh, with a red base on the uh, Xbox One X. Uh, so there's that. And again, go to their Twitter. Uh, you can get all the details and enter from there. Um, Final piece for Xbox this week, as it's kind of kind of slim from Xbox, uh, from what I was able to find. Um, Amy Hennig, uh, it, for those of you that don't know her, she's originally part of Naughty Dog. Um, she's the creator of the Uncharted series, um, and she was interviewed in in a follow up that basically I wanted to start a discussion on. Um, she's stating that. AAA titles are becoming toxic and unsustainable. Um, that being primarily due to the fact that game cycles that used to be two to three years in length are now upwards of five plus years to complete because we're expanding the universe and that these games are actually played in. Everybody wants a bigger, wide open world. Everybody wants to consistently get into something new as they progress through the game. So that is making these 
uh, development cycle is a lot longer, and that's definitely affecting companies. Um, AAA Studios have filed bankruptcy and shut down. THQ was one of those studios that shut down after development because of the fact that they just couldn't afford the man hours, couldn't afford the budget for a AAA title, etc. Um, Hennig states that something has to give. Now the question is, what has to give? How do we give up our need for AAA high-end titles that will allow an immersive experience to all the gamers who play those games without getting people involved in the full development cycle? Does this mean that maybe the AAA publishers have to then go and get a larger uh, force behind the title so that they can make it make more sense and dwindle the time down? Is that even possible? Um, the other thing to note of this is that in in a and basically publishers and developers that fall under the Sony cloud don't generally have this issue because Sony is willing to push hard for the development but at the same time they're also willing to chalk titles up as a loss if in fact they don't live up to standard because of their large umbrella of developers that work very, very close with Sony. So Sony is able to do some things that maybe Xbox and Nintendo can't exactly accomplish. Nintendo, however, doesn't really ultimately fall in this category because a lot of their games are not necessarily AAA titles. They're not built for it. Um, however, there's no telling that that won't change as Nintendo looks to develop into the next cycle. What are they developing? We don't know. We've heard from Xbox, we've heard from Sony, um, and we know that there's an Xbox that is Scarlet and Maverick that are coming out. We also know that Sony is working on PS5. What we don't know is if Nintendo is working on anything or if they're just going to hold off and let their development cycle um, go through a little bit longer before they even think of releasing something new. A lot of people like the Switch, so maybe they're going to wait a while. It might be three, four years before we see anything new from Nintendo, but that being the case, Nintendo has always been a Nintendo family-friendly market. Um, AAA titles don't necessarily always fall into that demographic, so we'll see. Now, um, that's it for Xbox. Let's move into Nintendo. Nintendo's trailer this week, being that Rico um, is out on all three systems, Rico is the second release for them this week. Theirs is Caligula Effect, which is an anime-based game. Check the, t check the trailer out, and we'll discuss it in just a second. That was the trailer for Caligula Effect from Nintendo Switch. Um, that comes out on the 12th, so you get two days to that. I'm not a huge anime fan. Um, to be honest, uh, this looks like it could be interesting. Um, 
it's just based on the story itself. Um, but there's not a whole lot of what the gameplay would be uh, in this trailer. So I'm not very sure um, of how it's going to play out. But if you're a fan of anime um, as a whole, then you might enjoy this. So definitely grab that if you're looking forward to it. That comes out again on the 12th, which is Tuesday. Um, now let's get into Nintendo's news for the week. So Vaporum um, is a steampunk dungeon crawler which will be available April 11th on Switch. It's a grid-based, single-player, single-character RPG. Uh, I looked at the trailer on this, and it basically looks like Diablo meets Bioshock. It's actually really interesting. The graphics look great. Um, so this might be something worth picking up. And if you want to do, check out that trailer. Um, again, it's Vaporum, V-A-P-O-R-U-M. Um, definitely look that up on YouTube. Uh, it does look really good. It's interesting. So, but the thing that I feel um, might be missing is the the way the fighting mechanic really works because you don't really see that in the trailer. Um, you see a couple things, and it almost seems like they're kind of bursting out from the enemy um, to attack you. However, you don't see a whole lot of how your attacks work. So, it'd be interesting to see more uh, when it comes to Vaporum. But, however, it does look really good. Check the trailer out. Um, and, you know, if you like it, again, that's coming out on April 11th. Uh, the last piece of news for today is Splatoon 2 uh, is being updated to 4.5.0 tomorrow. Um, that's Monday the 11th. And um, it primarily handles weapons updates, from what I saw. There's, there's about... 30 to 40 weapons updates uh, in the multiplayer area that are being corrected uh, along with bug fixes. Overall, it looked to be about 45 different items that were being fixed with this update to Splatoon 2. So if you're a player of Splatoon 2 and you enjoy that game, um, you have a bug fix slash weapons fix coming out tomorrow. So um, hopefully that improves your gaming. Now, as a, as always, leave your comments, suggestions, questions, etc. below. Hit that like and share button. And by all means, we look forward to you tuning in to week 12 um, as we cross into the news for that week. I hope you enjoyed week 11. And uh, we still haven't decided what this month's uh special video at the end of the week or end of the month is going to be we'll be making that announcement next week so again stay tuned uh we'll see you next sunday and thank you for tuning in to upfront games have a good one guys